our good buddy, David Pollack, the uh, former All-American at Georgia. And make sure you check out the David Pollack College Football on YouTube. I know that you went to Georgia. I know prior to the game you thought Georgia was going to win. But give me just step away from your bulldogum and tell me why you thought Georgia was going to win this game. Well, I think it, it's just like anything else, Dan. Like, styles make fights. And not every week is the same. And I think people have looked at Georgia. I thought they would lose to Alabama. I, I thought Alabama stylistically posed a bigger problem to them, even though both were away from home. You look at Texas, they're not overly aggressive. I didn't think defensively they had like a real game breaker, but I thought that they would, I thought they would have more success on offense. Um, but Georgia defensively, you know, one of the best players in the country, Michael Williams, got hurt in game one. He started to slowly get healthy. Warren Brinson, starting defensive tackle, slowly getting healthy. So I think that combined with Dan, when you finally give Kirby Smart some fuel, i.e. just see the post-game press conference. By the way, you tackle better, you're more energized, you're more physical. When I can use things against you, and finally Georgia had for the first time they were an underdog on the road since 2020, and you could tell Kirby was spewing. He was so pissed off. The guys were were playing really, really hard. When you back a prideful cor- uh, program in a corner, tell them they can't do something, you know, doubt them a little bit, get them a little bit of fuel, I think you get the best version of them where Texas had the pats on the back and all the good things going their direction. And then he was using the fact that everybody on uh, college game day was picking Texas to beat Georgia. I know it's weird to us because we didn't play, but coaches always looking for a little bit or players looking for just a little bit of motivation. But it works on 18, 19, 20-year-olds apparently. A hundred percent. By the way, Like, it worked on me. Like, I go back and think about some of the things my coaches used to say to me. I'm like, how did that work? Like, I I should have known they were absolutely full of crap. But, yeah, we're 18, 19, (laughs) 20-year-old kids. And also, Dan, being able to show you examples of you getting beat, show you examples of people doubting you and who you are, 100% stokes a fire. It stokes a flame. It makes you play on it. I'm a football coach now, a high school football coach. Do you know how easy it is when you go into games – and everybody's talking about you're probably going to lose. Like, you don't have a chance to win. It's the easiest job to get your team motivated. But it's really hard when everybody's like, man, you're so good, dude. Like, you guys have been playing great. Everything's going in the right direction. So to be able to call some of those examples out and like, hey, guys, we need to work on this. Here's an example. You've really struggled with this to see in live examples against Alabama. And now I can use that to motivate my kids. So, yeah, these kids – they're 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 going to believe what their coaches tell them, and finally Kirby had a reason to go. Listen, nobody thinks you're any good. They think Texas is going to curb stomp you, and and then you saw the best version of them. Alabama, Tennessee told you more about which program? I think it told me more about Tennessee because I think that when I look at Tennessee, man, they've been handling adversity, handling adversity. They haven't scored now in three straight games in the first half. So to me, for them to kick it in gear in the second half and score 24 and finally get that side of the football going, they have an elite defense. We've known that. I I think they have a chance to have a special season because of that defense. But I think moving forward, Nico has that, that third down with a minute 50 left in the first half where he scrambles to the right and throws a dime. He has the slot fade touchdown that He's got some things to build on. Did he still have some misses? Yes, he still had some misses. And But I think Tennessee can be very dangerous. When you look at their schedule going forward, they're going to be favored in every game, probably except for the Georgia game because they got to visit Georgia. Uh, but they'll have some of that same motivation going the other direction. But I think this this springboards Tennessee probably to, a, to another level. David Pollack uh, used to be with College Game Day, still one of the more knowledgeable people in America. Talking college football is uh, – college football podcast on YouTube. A couple of things here. You know, when the 12-team playoff came out and people said, oh, there goes the regular season. I said, no. If anything, I'm going to double, triple the number of schools, even more than that, who may have the chance to get in there. That The entire top 20, top 25, Army and Navy have to be thinking, there's a chance we can get in there. And that's what I love about this. And you can play some tough opponents early. And you can have two losses. Maybe somebody gets in with three losses. 
I, I think this has worked out pretty well. I don't know if it's fair to assess it right now at the end of October, but it feels like there are just more fan bases that can be more involved because you have a chance to maybe make the playoffs. Your thoughts? And how, how is that not winning? Like, how is it not better to have more people invited to the dance, invited to the party to prove themselves? This coincides, too, with the perfect the, – the NIL rules, the, the transfer portal rules – like, it's all coming together because every roster is so much uh, – the depth is depleted on every great team across the country. Like, you're not seeing a, a bunch of great backup quarterbacks anywhere anymore. You're not seeing a bunch of great back, uh, backup players anymore. I had a coach in the top five, Dan, a coach in an SEC program in the top five, like an elite program, that literally said, we stop recruiting multiple five-star guys once we get a commitment at the same position. Who the heck says that? Like, who says that out loud? You want as much, much talent as you can get, but if one doesn't play early, Dan, they're going to leave. Yeah. So you put all the time, energy, resources into that person, and now they're going to leave. So the roster compilation is different. So now, now you have so many guys that can join the party now. That And here's the thing we haven't seen. We've, we've talked about it for years. Oh, so-and-so's hot down the stretch. Okay, well, now they get a chance to prove it. Now, now we're going to see home playoff games. Now you got Army, Navy. Uh, BYU, who are all undefeated, like Indiana is undefeated. So I think more access is good. People have complained about players not playing in big games down the stretch, big games for their school. Well, now so many more teams in it, so many more players are not going to opt out and go somewhere else because so much it means so much more. So, yeah, I, I was against the, the 12 at first. I wanted to stick with the four because I'm getting to be the grumpy old man. Like, I like what I like. Stop changing it. But it's been pretty cool to see. Yeah, I, I agree. I just, I, I want more games to mean more instead of you get into November and it's like, well, that game doesn't mean anything. Just that possibility of you could get on a run and you could win your conference. Um, are you more surprised at Michigan or USC? Uh, Michigan. I think Michigan, Dan, if you look at Michigan and listen, they could have won a couple more games. Sure. Uh, but they easily could have lost the USC game. They could have they could have lost two more games as well. There's a good chance if you look at Michigan's schedule, they not might not go to a bowl. I'm fine with Michigan. Like I got a ring, by the way. If I'm Michigan fans and and I'm flaunting, I don't give a dang if I have a bad season. But I did. I don't think you expect them to fall off a cliff and not go to a bowl game. The only guarantee on the schedule is Northwestern left. Like they got Indiana, they got Ohio State, they got Oregon. So <laughs> they could lose three out of those four and, and be sitting at home during bowl season, which is that's crazy to think about with so much NFL talent and such a good defense, but the quarterback spot man and the receiver spot for them has been such a weakness. And when you're trying three guys, you know, good and well, you ain't got one. How do you explain you? I, I said last week, I think we over hyped. I think we thought USC was just because they played a little more defense they were somehow going to be in the national title, title picture. And I said, you lost Caleb Williams. Start there. And, okay, you're playing a little more defense. Well, playing any defense is a little more than you did. I, I just think the expectation level was out of whack for USC. Well, and you're playing a much better schedule. Like, I mean, you're, you're playing in the Big Ten now, obviously. So it's going to be a lot harder. You've got a lot more teams that can beat you and, a lot, and, and stylistically that can line up and pound you. Here's the thing. If we point to Lincoln Riley, we can point to Heisman Trophy winners. We can point to explosive offenses. We can point to explosive skill players. He's never developed the line of scrimmage. That's where he struggled the most, man. Offensive line. You watch offensive line at USC. They're not good. They struggle to keep their guy upright. Their backs are really good. Like those, those backs could be great players if you gave them space. I, the, the, the system and what he, the way he coaches, the further he got removed from Bob Stoops and that physicality and that toughness, the more you've seen his squad struggle. So I don't know what you do either, man, because – and here's another thing too, another sneaky thing about Lincoln Riley. He hadn't recruited the state of California. That's kind of surprising to me when you go to a brand at USC and you walk in and here's your recruiting pitch, Dan. I walk in and I'm like, hey, quarterback, you're, you're the best quarterback? Okay. Here's my resume, Heisman Trophy winners. Here, here's my resume. We go to the final, we put up the best offenses, number one overall picks. Like, just go ahead and sign on the dotted line right here. So the fact that he hasn't been able to get California, Oregon go, comes in and gets more California kids. And so I think the recruiting trail, hiring a defensive coordinator that 
that wasn't as good at that spot because if they had a defense the last couple years, they could have made some serious noise. So there's definitely trouble at USC, and he's got to find a way to get more elite talent and, and to, to promote more physicality some way, somehow in that program. Worst shape, Florida State or Oklahoma? Florida State. I mean, I, I, I don't even bat an eye. One in six, like um, everybody's depressed. I mean, and here's the thing. I want to start pointing towards the future. Like, I can look at Oklahoma and I can go, hey, man, physical, great defense. We can't score. We can't throw. One of the reasons going into the Texas game where I felt like Texas's defense wasn't as good as people thought was because the best teams they played was Oklahoma, who doesn't have an offensive pulse. And then they played uh, – who else they played? Michigan. Like, those are the two offenses that we've seen their defenses be really good against. But FSU, I don't know what I point to, Dan. Like, I don't have a lot of hope. Now, I can point to last year and we got hosed and all that stuff. But this season, man, I got to start saying, okay, I'm paying this coach $100 million and we're supposed to be going on this trajectory. I know some years won't work, by the way. And I'm okay with – because he does such – he goes into the portal so much, Dan, that when you blend – portal players and high school players, it's not always going to work perfectly. And you're going to have some seasons where you'll have some guys that are probably fractured, don't come together like you want them to. One in six, not going to a bowl game? Like, I'm an optimistic person and I'm a positive person. I'm positive. There's nothing to be positive about at Florida State. <laughs> like, they're not good. And that's that's got to be frustrating when you're paying a coach that much money and you'd like to see some kind of development throughout the season. Great to talk to you as always. Good luck with the uh, podcast on YouTube, David Pollock College Football. Uh, what day does that come out? It comes out on Sundays and Thursdays. And shout out to you, Big Dog. Appreciate you taking my call and helping me out, man. You didn't have to do that, but loved your feedback, and it's very helpful. So thank you, my man. That's David Pollock, a uh, former All-American at Georgia, former first-round pick by uh, Cincinnati Bengals. And uh, it's David Pollock College Football on YouTube. 